Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another stock market update. So first things first, we got the S&P 500. So first off, we got the RSI and the MACD. You can see that the RSI seems to be breaking out here. And the MACD also seems like it's just about to cross towards the upside. So if all things goes well uh, with the stock market, with NVIDIA as well, um, then it's very possible for the market to continue to move up. I think Tom Lee had a very bullish uh, price. I can't remember what his price is. It might have been 540 or 560 um, by like, I think it was two weeks or something. I, I'm getting messed up with the numbers there. But a lot of people are very bullish on uh, the S&P 500. And let's move on to the uh, Fear and Greed Index. You can find it. There you go. So Fear and Greed Index moving from fear yesterday to neutral today. So it seems like, you know, the market is getting back into the bullish zone again. You can see, you know, on the line chart, uh, it seems to be breaking out here. And uh, the Fear and Greed Index moving from fear to neutral. And eventually, if this continues, we'll get into the greed zone here. So um, let's look at the uh, pre-market futures here. Seems like it's uh, down a little bit, but it's just a marginal 0.05% uh, down for the Dow. And then the S&P is 0 0.02. I think the market is probably going to move up here. I don't think the futures here are going to necessarily determine what's going to happen today. Um, the reason for that is because I, I think I, I look at NVIDIA and it seems like people are not stopping okay uh they went up about five percent yesterday one percent pre-market it doesn't seem like nvidia is stopping so i i think you know the spend on or rather the investment in uh ai uh, hardware nvidia especially is still going to continue and that just means that the index is going to move up and you know in my opinion uh even though nvidia is like overbought on the rsi it doesn't matter because they are fundamentally uh, outperforming so, you know, the RSI doesn't really matter here. Um, let's move on to, you know, my play here, which is Amazon, the most, I think, obvious play here, because uh, once again, my thesis is that AI spend on hardware will eventually move into AI spend in, in software, okay, uh, cloud computing, because, uh, you know, companies are buying NVIDIA chips because they see money, they see profit, and um, you know, money is going to flow into AI software. If not, you know, the entire market is going to fucking crash. Um, so, you know, one play, which is obvious to me is AWS and Amazon here. Um, AWS still has a, a lot of room to grow. I think it's currently valued at about 98 billion. Um, and their e-commerce is valued at about uh, 200 billion. I think those are real values. Um, so I think, you know, the cloud computing sector for Amazon still has a lot of room to grow. And that's why I am very heavy into Amazon here. You can see that the RSI is just about to break out here. Or, you know, it actually started to break out here on that one day. And then we have the MACD, which is also just about to cross again towards the upside. So we'll see some heavy resistance around $190 here, which is what I would expect. Um, and then we'll see if we can break out here, which I think we will. And I think we'll see probably 250 by the next two quarters is, is I think what's going to happen uh, or maybe three quarters. I might be a little bit too optimistic, um, but I do see upside with Amazon. Uh, this is a very short term, I know, but, you know, I, I just think it's very obvious. Here. So let's move on to more degenerate plays here. We got uh, Hims and Hers here, uh, take a simple HIMS. So I said that Hims had a... Uh, resistance at about 21 it seems to be breaking out a little bit from that and uh, that does seem to be some momentum holding so it, this could actually continue to go back up um, but the reason i'm selling or rather i sold in the past uh, is because there are competitors and uh, I, okay I, i've explained myself enough times but there are competitors um, and you know even though him is going to take a lot of the market share they're not going to get a lot of revenues uh, this quarter here. So what I think is going to happen, I think it could continue to go back up a, a little bit, but uh, I think at this point, it will be a little bit um, overbought here, but we'll see uh, 15 billion in five years and uh, let's move on. So next up, we got Robinhood here. Robinhood actually breaking out a little bit, um, but if you sort of extend this a little bit, uh, I guess we haven't actually broken out. Maybe I should have drawn this a little bit better. Um, but the reason for this is because Robinhood bought uh, Bitstamp. So you can see here on CNBC 
and you know bitstamp is a 200 million dollar uh, uh company um which is for crypto trading i i'm actually kind of puzzled why they bought bitstamp instead of just using their own product um i, I think they will explain it or maybe he did explain it i didn't complete the video uh but this kind of puzzled me a little bit um but when this happens they add value from their uh cash and debt into their market cap so that's why you know robin hook is currently uh being bought up right now because um they are just you know uh uh not naturally or rather uh, synthetically adding market cap to their company and their stock um so you know robin hood should move up here and they are growing very fast don't get me wrong uh, I have I have trimmed some Robinhood, but I don't think I'm gonna trim anymore because looking at them um, growing so fast, I think they can you know continue to move up. Um, and uh, RSI and MACD does seem a little bit um, over overbought here. Okay, um, MACD seems like it's curling down, but the stock price uh, is not moving down, so that's a good sign. And the one day RSI is albeit pretty high, but it does seem like it's curling back up again because of that acquisition. So I think it's possible for Robinhood to continue to move up. I think 25 is going to be the limit for this quarter. Um, and then they're going to need next quarter to really grow, which I think they will, by the way. Um, asset under custody for Robinhood for May is uh, 8 billion. So they are going to grow. Um, no problems there and I think they are executing very very well for this quarter now what I want to uh, be aware of is I don't want to see them slow down in the next one or two years if they do or rather you know the next I think four or six quarters if they do then we're going to have a repeat of something like SoFi um, which is something I'm very wary of right now because if they suddenly slow down which I don't think will happen by the way I think Vlad is a uh, actual like uh, balls CEO, um, baller CEO. Um, so I don't think they're going to slow down, but we do have to watch out for that uh, just in case we don't want another repeat of uh, SoFi. So that's just what I think here. Um, very bullish for the acquisition. At the same time, have to uh, watch if they slow down or anything. Okay. So next up, we got Celsius. Celsius uh, moving up yesterday. I don't think this is significant volume. I think what's happening with Celsius here is that it's probably going to consolidate around here, um, waiting for some better news. Maybe, you know, someone to say that their uh, sales volume is increasing. I don't know. Um, and we could possibly wait for other price targets to uh, bid the stock up again. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm still bullish on, on Celsius. Haven't sold a thing. Uh, not really buying right now. I, I bought a lot of other SaaS companies here, so I, I kind of ran out of cash. Uh, I bought a shit ton of Amazon. Um, so yeah, uh, there is Celsius. I'm still pretty bullish, but I am very wary of where they are at right now. The target here is going to be about a $50 billion market cap um, within the next five years. So next up, we got Pound here. Um, Pound here has, I think, AIP Con. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember the date here. You guys have to search it out yourself, but I think they have AIP con either today or next week. Man, I suck. Uh I I, I I'm I'm blanking out on the on the um the date here, but they're gonna have AIP con soon. And that is gonna be, I think, very bullish for the stock. You can see that it's up again today. Um oh, the market opened. Huh, I am very late today. I'm so sorry about that. They are up today. Um, we'll see what happens. This video is a fucking mess. Um, and yeah, so on the uh, consolidation range here, it does seem like they are just almost about to break out. Uh, one hour chart seems like you know the MACD has a lot of uh, momentum here, so we could very well break out here. So next up, uh, we got SoFi. I I still don't think they are gonna necessarily move here. Maybe they can surprise us with some fintech thing. Um. Uh, there is one news article here saying that you should buy uh, SoFi and ignore the critics. I think I am a, a, a critic here um, currently. Um, there's a lot to read here. You can find it on Investor's Place. And what it really goes through is basically the tech platform. Um, they go through like price to sales here somewhere in the bottom. 
uh, but what I didn't see is that they didn't go through the price to book. So I, I once again, it, it kind of sets off my um, uh, uh, bell here, which is uh, people or rather a lot of analysts are actually ignoring the price to book for SoFi, which I, I know they're, they're supposed to grow very fast, but their software isn't, you know, as, as big of a margin contributor or rather revenue contributor as uh, a lot of people seem to imply here. So I want to be bullish on SoFi. Unfortunately, I think something like a Robin Hood is going to grow faster. Um, I brought up something on Twitter, which is I, someone, uh, everything so far here says that he likes the application. And I asked a very simple question. Uh, do you use the brokerage? And someone replied, you know, uh, it's a simple, uh, uh, Okay, so far it's not interested in becoming a trading app. It's a simple buy shares and sell shares. My question is, why aren't they trying to be a trading app? Is it because they can't build one? Or, you know, is it simply because they don't see that there is a market opportunity, which is kind of dumb because, uh, you know, Robinhood, let's see what uh, the valuation for Robinhood is. Um, it's a $19 billion va uh, valuation for a brokerage. So. A brokerage is supposed to be very huge. There is supposed to be a lot of market opportunity. So I, I think, unfortunately, I think some SoFi bulls are a little bit um, uh, deluded here. So I, I, I typically don't hate to say, I, I, I typically don't want to say that. And I don't want to hate on this guy. Maybe he has a point here. Maybe I am not seeing it. Um, but I just don't understand why they don't want to build a, a very, very good trading app. Okay. So that's just my point here. Um, let's move on from SoFi. Uh, you know what? That's going to be the last, uh, uh, stock for today here. So thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe. I'm very late to this, uh, uh, stock market update. So sorry about that, but I'm going to post it anyway. So see you in the next one.